Hey, everybody. So, it's been a while since I've done a street one, huh? So, I was thinking, very sweaty right now. It's not too bad out. Um, I was journaling this morning, and I was journaling sort of the prompts that I was using from the heart of understanding the Buddha. For some reason, I've had to be 20 years, I still can't get any of it in range, but it's by taking that time. Anyway, I was using it as a prompt. Oh, goodness, you're back. All right, I don't know where you left me. But, um, yeah, the prompt I was using was from a chapter called Stopping Calming Resting Feelings. And I just decided to go with stopping. And I'm kind of writing about that for the next few days. Um, I wrote about that yesterday, too. But I was thinking about today, kind of, I started writing and something occurred to me that I wanted where I wanted to turn the, uh, the camera on and talk to you guys about it. But I was like, no, I'm just going to find a thought, which led on to another thought. Um, and sorry, I'm going in my house now. Um, so I didn't I didn't really stop. But it was, it's like when I first started doing this, that really kind of got me out of my depression. Um, so it was really nice to have. This continuance of thought and something what's there. Is that that's new. <laughs> oh no, okay, good. It's just some piece of dirt. Um so yeah. <sighs> so um this is all right and sweaty, but you've seen me at my worst. So anyway, um yeah, so it's this continuous thought that kind of is discovery, asking myself questions and finding the answers. That was nice, wasn't it? Um, and just continually asking myself and finding the answers to these questions that I was asking. Um, and they got, it got uncomfortable, but that's when you really need to dig into it, right? Um, so the first thing that I did was talk about stopping. And I mean, I know I've said that 30 times, but. Um, pair of shorts on in a minute, but for right now, this is where I'm at, because um, you don't need to come with me to change my pants. Um, so, this will stand. So the idea, yeah, so the idea was like, oh no, it doesn't, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll put it here, will that do it? Okay. Um, so the idea I started out with was, is one of my, one of my favorite stories. I just think it's really funny and I don't know why I always get the, not the giggles, but I always like, <laughs> like that whenever I hear it. Um, it's the story of, uh, you know, this, this guy was standing on, I don't know if it was a shore or on a road or whatever. And he sees in the distance, he sees this, this other person, like, galloping on a horse really really fast and i'm going to be gender neutral here so this guy on the ground it's a girl on the on the horse in the story it's actually two guys but you know what that was awkward. um so yeah that was not nice i don't like that i didn't do that let's put it no i did that but let's learn from it but it makes me feel icky and not do it again um so uh so the, the person coming the, the woman coming on the horse is um going really fast and as she gets to the guy the guy yells at her like hey where are you going in such a hurry and she's she's like i don't know ask the horse and i just that, to me that's just really funny <laughs> because it's so true right that in that the horse is our habit energy so i was talking about habit energy which is something that i've kind of pondered um several times but really didn't get until recently um listening to michael singer's new, new, latest book and, you know, it's just every once in a while things jump out at you, all right? So habit energy is like you're, you're working on these things that, that you're, you're working hard on, right? Like you're working on being present in the moment. You're working on, you know, noticing your breath and not paying attention to your thoughts, like focusing on something other than your thoughts, like feeling your emotions and letting them go. But then there, there's these, there's this habit energy that keeps bringing, like, like the thoughts come and you want to go with them. You know what I mean? Like, I, like it's really really tempting to go with the thoughts and your mind will your mind will lie to you like oh just 
I'll, I'll not have thoughts for the next, like, like a walking around the pond. Like, when I get to that tree, I'll be able to start thinking again. But not right now, not having thoughts. But then it's like, why don't you just try and not, I mean, it's not not having thoughts. It's about not, you know, not focusing on them and not going with them. Um, but it is so easy to go with them. Um, it's so easy to get upset with them uh, or about them or through them or on them or near them. Um, but that's hindering the work. And if you really want to progress emotionally and spiritually, one must stop the, the habit energies. Although I hesitate to use the word stop because um, it's hard to force your, like, it's not productive to force yourself to think one thing or not think another or feel something or not feel another because it's, you're not going to win. <laughs> so you just allow what's happening to happen and you focus on something else. Um, so like, whatever, I can have the thoughts that I'm having, but I don't have to focus on them. I don't like, I don't have to go with them. I don't have to go down that road. Like take that, take the, take the turn into crazy town, right? Like that's something my, ther my therapist <laughs> is talking to me about one time. That was a long time ago. But, you know, like notice when you're starting to take the turn into crazy town and, and go, get back to the main road. Um, so, you know, just walking down the, walking down this, this path of, okay, these thoughts come in, these emotions come in. I don't focus on the thoughts and I allow the emotions to go through. But we've got this habit energy pulling us back into these thoughts. And I'm like, okay, so like, why is that? Um, and, you know, like, what are the, the habit energy? What are the habit energies that I pull myself into? I'm going to refer to my journal because I am exactly Robin. We are not your thoughts. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. Um, you are the light. You are the consciousness. Um, you are the experiencer of your thoughts and your feelings. So you don't have to go with them. They are not who you are. You can just notice them. Hi, thoughts. Thanks. Or, you know, that was nice of you. I'm going to just go over here and pay attention to something. I did a long entry today. Um, so, yeah. So I, it just kind of went from one thing to another. And um, one of the things that I've been journaling about as far as stopping is concerned is that you have to stop in order to get anywhere else. Um, you got to stop these, these habit energies. If you want to then become aware, if you want to meditate, if you want to do anything other than what you're doing right now, <laughs> which very often is not healthy, you have to stop. <laughs> but again, like I was saying earlier, like stopping, forcing yourself to stop or getting angry at yourself for not stopping is completely pointless and counterproductive. So releasing and letting go, I think is maybe or refocusing. These are things that might be more useful thoughts that are more useful for me, but I do like the idea of stopping, calming, resting, healing. That's cool. Um, so the first pages are also always about bitching and moaning about stuff in my life. <laughs> and then I get onto it. Um, and I wonder, okay, so Yeah, I, I actually wrote, like, this is good. <laughs> um, what did I, I was talking about watercolors. When did I talk about watercolors? Um, so I want to put up affirmations because I forget stuff sometimes. Um, I think it goes the wrong way. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk about apostrophes and peoples. Okay, come on. So stopping and um, noticing what's around you, right? Like rather than going off on your thought quest to wherever that, you know, the habit horse is going to pull you to, you stop and you start paying attention to what's around you. You know, like I, you earlier today when I was writing um, the journal, it was like, oh, there are birds chirping. That's really nice. Let's listen to the birds chirp. How often do I sit and listen to the birds chirp? I should sit and listen to the birds, birds chirp more often. Robin, I'm going to bring you on if you're still here. Are you? No. Okay. Um, so if you're still here, I'd love to bring you on. I just don't have the option right now. Do I? No. Okay. Um, so yeah, so 
I was noticing the smells that coming, you know, the, the aromas coming from my diffuser and um, noticing like I was comfortable on my Cheers Lounge. Hi, Robin. Can you ask to come on? Because I can't I can't choose to put you on. I don't know if you I don't know if, or if you're busy, you're busy. That's OK to do. Um, so, yeah, so it's just I have these like realizations, but this is the thing about journaling when you're journaling. Um, when you're journaling, if you keep going, when you start getting uncomfortable, that's when you know you should keep going. Right. You, you, you start discovering things and or recovering things um, or rediscovering things. Um, but. A lot of times, you know, one of the habit energies that I have is I go back to regret. Um, I go back to lots of lots of points in my life that I I am angry at myself about. Um, and I redo them in my head or I, I, I just lash myself with them as like a whip. Like, oh, you're so fucking stupid. I can't believe you did that. Um, and that's not healthy. <laughs> it's not that's not useful. I can't find. I wish I could call you. It doesn't. It doesn't say. Uh, it doesn't let me do that. Why isn't it giving me that option? That's lame. Well, if if it does at some point, I will call you, beckon you forth, because this is a great topic to t discuss with you because you're awesome. Um, but to keep going on it until maybe I could, I could ask Robin to come on if she if she's able to find it um you know I go that's that, that's where my habit horse takes me very often um takes me back into the past and specifically to 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 memories that are not useful for me to there are a lot of memories that just aren't um aren't useful at all the way you know Michael Singer calls them some scars and the way they're formed is that you focus your attention on them. You don't allow them to come in and go through you. You focus your attention and that keeps them stuck and that creates like an energy block. And, um, and when things hit that energy block, it's like, ouch. Um, hey Kelly. Um, and yeah, so when things hit that energy block, it, it's, it hurts and it, it wakes you up, right? That's something, that's that's a clue like ah when you're feeling annoyed or angry or sad or what whatever the feeling is that comes from like something that just happened or something that someone said or just randomly triggered like you've got to ask about it you've got to ask yourself you know what I mean like what is that and it's always almost always I don't like using absolutes almost always some energy block that you that you are holding there it's not someone else that's another story I'm not going to go into that right now I can go down 30 paths to it right now but um so it's worth taking a look at what that is and realizing that what you're reacting to is not actually um you're reacting to something that happened in the past but anyway I'm going down a different route than I really wanted to I was talking about stopping and habit horses and regrets and um, yeah, so it's just not useful to to bludgeon yourself with it. And one of the okay, so one of the things that I did when I first started getting over my depression, um, you know, I just as a as a reminder, anybody who doesn't know the story, which you know I have myriad legions of fans who know all about me but just in case <laughs> you don't know the story um I was depressed for like a good decade and you know when you when you're like that you go you go you go down your life does not flourish <laughs> especially if you're on your own um and in fact like things just seem to go from bad to worse and that only only reinforces things um but the thing about depression is you don't, at least I didn't see that there was another way of, um, of thinking about it. Um, I didn't realize. And, and if you had told me 
that there was, I would not, I might have, okay, maybe for you, but blah, 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 blah. I, there's always a reason. There's always a, a, a way to fight for your misery. You know what I mean? There's always a reason to be upset. <laughs> you can always find a reason. You can, especially like, you know, when you're down there and you're in your, this is the way your mind goes now. You know, you, you, you entrench, you carve these paths in your brain where you're like, someone says, oh, but you could think of it this way. And your automatic reaction is like, yeah, I could, but that's not true because blah, 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 blah. Um, not helpful, by the way. Um, so you think you own the truth of what's going on. And you think anybody else who could possibly have gotten out of depression, were, obviously were not as depressed as you were. But I always believed that one day I would come out of it. I just didn't think today was day ever. Um, but anyway. COVID came and we sat in the house and we got money from the government and I didn't have to worry about money. Um, and that took all my thoughts. <laughs> like, all like, I mean, how many, I, I hadn't even, I mean, I did realize how much I thought about money and like where the next check was going to come from and like how I was going to get out of the situation and blah, blah, blah. But when I didn't have to worry about it, Like, I was able to focus on my mental health, um, which had been an issue for a long time, and figure out what the hell was going on. Um, and the way I did that is to, I started journaling. Now, I have this book that a lot of people know about called um, The Artist's Way. It's about recovering your creativity, your creative recovery. And um, a lot of it's based on... Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, that, those programs, um, so there's like 12 steps. And anyway, there's 12 chapters and every chapter you have, you have a different exercise, you have a different focus. Um, but the two main things that are the most important tools in it are the, what they call the morning pages, which means you get up and whatever is on your brain, you just write it down for at least three pages. They say three pages, I go at least three pages because I always like once, at about three pages is when I really get going. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, oh, oh, sorry, I'm relaxing now. Let's get some water. Um, so I would what? I would, I would write these, I would, st I started doing the book again, which I only, I tried like 50 times, but I only ever got to like chapter eight ever. So I was like, I'm going to do it this time. Um, and I started writing, but. Because I'd done it so often, so many times, I was like, I want different prompts. So I grabbed, um, I have a sandwiches that I bought that I need to eat before my next interview. Um, so I, I grabbed this book, The Heart of Buddhist Teaching. And I started reading it and I, I just used it as prompts. Anytime a sentence struck me, I would start writing whatever it was that struck me. And um, this was the game changer. This is what turned it all around for me because I had the time to sit there and think these things through. I had the time to like, no, I'm not going to push this away. Like this is, I would come up on something and I was like, and my feeling was like, I do not want to write about this. I do not want to think about this. And that like, for whatever reason, my brain would then go like, that means you have to, to write about it. You have to think about it. And on the other side of that, always, like, I'd be this hump, like, oh, God, this is so painful. And then, like, on the other side of it was, like, crazy realizations and crazy healing, really, healing. And um, and I just, there was so much I realized about myself. So I, I, I started that, and one of the things, I think I started with the, the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths of Buddhism, right, is uh, there is the suffering, the arising of suffering, the potential of well-being, and the path to well-being. It's basically, um, you know, there's, they say it in different ways, but that's about it. Um, so what I did was I spent, I was like, oh, I'll spend a week. I'll spend a, first I was like, I'll spend a day on suffering and then a day on this and a day on that, and I will go throughout the book. And then I got to, you know, the first day I was like, yeah, no, I have to spend like another day on suffering. And then I was like, 
but no, I have to spend that week on suffering. And then it was like, you know what? There are three, three, um, turnings of the wheel, they call them. And I'm going to get it wrong. So I'm going to look it up. I know it's recognition, encouragement and resolution, but the exact meanings of, of it aren't, aren't what I think of as recognition, encouragement and, and resolution. So, um, or realization. So with, uh, with suffering, for example, there are three turnings of the wheel. Recognition, this is suffering. Encouragement, suffering should be understood. And realization, suffering is understood, right? And then arising of suffering, recognition, there is an ignoble, I love the word ignoble, ignoble way that has led to suffering. Encouragement, the ignoble way should be understood. And realization, the ignoble way is understood. So you get the idea. So I actually spent a week on each of the turnings of the wheel. Um, and the, the first was just recognition of suffering, right? Like, and I went through, I used this one specific thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to focus on my suffering, the suffering um, I go through because I'm overweight at the time. And I'm back there now, <laughs> not quite as bad as it was, but yeah, I was stress ate for like two months straight. And now I'm like back to where I started, but that's okay. I know how to get out of it. Um, one of what one way of which is drinking some water. So I would write, um, I just started writing about the ways in which I was suffering from being overweight. And I did not know. <laughs> and I did I was not aware of all the different ways it was affecting my life. It affects it, it was affecting me not just emotionally, but it affected me spiritually. It was affecting me physically obviously I mean I was like that's not just physical right it's not just physical but emotionally psychologically like mentally like financially it it stopped me from following my dreams like it 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 kept me from a social life now granted what was actually keeping me from my social life was the thing that was making me eat more food which was the thing that was making me overweight but you know, because being overweight was just an excuse so that I wouldn't have to go <laughs> out. But it also became, its, it, I mean, obviously it was its own thing, but I was so horrified at how I had, let me put, preface this. <laughs> uh, earlier on, uh, I'm, I'm an actress and uh, I had been doing very well. And at that time in my mid to late 20s early 30s um i was i i was not i mean i was i was fit i was fit and i was happy with the way that i looked um i mean i always was like oh i could use a, i could lose a few more pounds but i was re reasonably happy um especially in my mid my mid 20s you know because we all that's always a, anyway um I was recently happy with the way that I looked and I was happy to go out on auditions and people knew me. Like I had actually gotten a name for myself in the community and the, you know, film industry here in Boston, the, the independent industry. And also, um, you know, with, with the secondary market that was coming here because of the tax breaks. Uh, so I, I was known as this particular person and, you know, like, I was like, no, people would come up. It was weird. If people would come up to me like, you're Jack Robin. Like, yep. Yeah. Um, so when I started gaining weight, the idea that I would go out and someone from the community would see me and be like, what the hell happened to her? Like was so mortifying that I stopped going out. <laughs> um I just, and yeah, sure, it was vanity and ego, but I just couldn't, even, even now, even now, it's a, it's a problem for me. But what I realized through doing this was that I realized that that's, I mean, I knew that that was what was happening, but I realized how kind of messed up that was. Like, I am, I'm not seeing friends because of this. Like, I, I'm, I'm not, because I'm so embarrassed and so ashamed that I let this happen, that I don't, I, I don't see friends. You know what I mean? And, and it's causing this depression and because of the depression, you know, or at least recycling the depression. Um, and because of this, like, yeah, I didn't have a social life and I had given up on my career, my dreams, my entire life that I dreamed this one thing 
because I self-sabotaged and then was became afraid of doing it again, I self-sabotaged again by gaining weight so I wouldn't have to go and try anymore. <laughs> but um, where, yeah, I'm going way off, way off. But I just wanted to say that I I recognized a lot of suffering that I hadn't even realized that was present, um, and examined it right, like because you don't you can't just write it down. You examine it, like it's like okay, well, <laughs> these are it was basically like these are the ways in which I'm suffering, um, and then the the second turning in the world was like how how do I understand these, and then the third turning is like okay they're understood. Um, so it was a lot of process of looking deeply into it and really forcing myself. I don't like the words forcing, pushing myself through the discomfort to the realization on the other side. And it was just like realization after realization. And I realized that I had been punishing myself so much for things. And I just went like this in my eye and I have some sunblock on my knuckle and now it's thing. Um, so if you see me like, that's why. All right, no, focus. Okay, um, so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm going back to that. I'm, I'm, I'm journaling and I want to encourage people out there if this rings, like if this resonates with you, go do that because you sit in it, you, you sit in it, but you also have to understand it. You have to understand where it's coming from. And the more you write, the realization, like, sure, okay, you, you get a realization for this part of the suffering, but that realization leads you to some, another thought, which is uncomfortable, and you're like, oh, shit, and then you go through that thought and that emotion, and you come to another realization, and you're like, oh, my God, and then, like, that realization leads to another realization, and it just, it just goes, and it, you can, you can really, you can really go off on it, and that's what has been, what happens yesterday and today for me with journaling, which is really exciting, because when I was caught up in that journaling that I'm telling you about the first time I reached like after several, like maybe after three, three to six weeks, I, I, I became elated. Like there was something that released. Um, and you know, what they call it Shakti flow or whatever. Like I was high. Like I literally felt like I was floating through like, and I was so happy. And obviously that didn't last forever. Because there are plenty more, <laughs> plenty more blockages that I have to uh, release, but it was intense and amazing. And I want to encourage anybody out there who has, who who is like, oh, I can't do that. Like, you can sit down and just do it. And I thought that too. I thought that, oh, other people can get better, but not me. They don't. They're not suffering as much as I am. <laughs> didn't suffer as much as I do um and you know just like all the excuses I made for why I needed to keep in this mindset what eventually happened is I started realizing there are different ways to think about things different ways to process things different ways to yeah to process and to just understand things um different ways of seeing that I did not believe were there. Um, and that's what I'm doing here, right? That's what that's the whole point of these videos. I go off on them. I, I really should stop getting off on that because like I, I I was intending to talk about a different topic and now this is like 30 hours long and it didn't go into the topic that I had intended to go in. Anyway, so um yeah, so I was talking about regrets in my journal and um there's this exercise that I came up with during that period of time because I have these thoughts that just keep attacking me. Like I feel attacked by thoughts sometimes, like just attack. Like I can't like, ah, like it just like they just come at me and I can't stop them and they're hurting me and there's nothing I can do. Um, that's how thoughts feel like to me. sometimes, <laughs> And they're not nice. They're never nice. That I never am attacked by nice thoughts. <laughs> they're always awful thoughts. Um, and a lot of times they're, they're regrets and I have a ton of them. There are a ton that, that like are stored in there and they're, I visit them all often, you know, like they're, they're all there and like they, they're, they're specific ones that just come up 
because those are some scars and it's the energy trying the shakti trying to push them out of the way that's why they come up but then you push them back down because they're so painful right and that is not good um so the point then would be to allow them to come up and allow them to pass through and relax and release through through them and allow yourself to sit in the discomfort because it fucking hurts <laughs> but um what I started doing because I would get so anxious one of these thoughts would come I mean there's so many of them and they were triggered so easily I would just I was like I need to do, I need to have there needs to be a way for me to handle these thoughts because I, they, I have them and like I start like hyperventilating and like I, I just I just become so like it was so so anxiety provoking like I'd have to sit there and like really like breathe through it every time or, or I or I felt like I was gonna like I don't even know what the what it would have been but I came up with this exercise for myself and a lot of a lot of this came through journaling slowly but surely I realized the things that were gonna help me so these are the things that help me if you journal and think about the things that are gonna help you that's that's even better but for me what helped me was I would when I had the thought I would write it down immediately like okay I gotta deal with this thought I, I don't like like usually it's like no push it away but um oh shit I gotta go <laughs> I'm supposed to be on a call and I gotta go bye I'll, I'll talk more about this later